Hello Polygoners, I am Shaft, you are watching my Let's Play series of placement matches. As you can see this match is on Catalina, one of my most hated maps, I actually hate any map with uh, random number generating, so basically any 3 player, 4 player maps when I'm playing a 1v1, not a fan, this is going to be a Zerg vs Protoss, unfortunately I do not listen to my friend's advice where he suggests Pneumatized Carapace is the end all be all all of Zerg vs Terran and Zerg vs Protoss. However, game is a very competitive one. Uh, the thing about Catalina is there's a chance you may be taking a third base as a Zerg player without actually knowing where your opponent is. And that could mean expanding towards your opponent, which is not an ideal situation in this matchup. So we'll see how that ends up faring. Got that second base going down. This is my standard uh, build. Just opening fast hatch, pull gas. Um, not even in that order. Gas, pull, whatever. You know, it's all good. Anyways, uh, game kind of slogs on just a little bit. So here's a little history of Catalina. Actually, it's named after um, a Korean pop song. No one really knew what it meant when they asked the artist. Basically, it means a kind of upper class girl who has a uh, high opinion of herself, thinks a lot of herself, so that's um, kind of legacy of this map. There's actually seven tentacles on the octopus in the middle because in the uh, of the octopus um, was in the video music video Catalina, and the seven tentacles represent the seven major K-pop girl groups. So I thought that was pretty cool. You know, uh, I think I think octopuses usually have eight legs. I think that's the octo part. Don't don't get me lying though. Anyways, the game's shaping out pretty normal. I want to warn you guys, though, at some point in this game, we are going to have a user interface change where my basically OBS overloaded a little bit, kind of lagged out a little bit. So there's about a minute, two minute portion of this where you're going to see it switch to the GameHeart user interface and it's no longer going to be a first person VOD uh, simply because I wanted you guys to be able to see that footage. So my apologies for that. You'll know it when it comes. I'll probably point it out, but it'll be in the middle of a battle. So I figured I'd give you a heads up now. Now, I don't know how many of you out there are using camera hotkeys, but it's something I recently added into my game, and I really highly urge you, if you have not made the switch to using camera location hotkeys, there's at least four you want. Your main, your natural, your third base, and one forward point that you can kind of get to, like maybe it's a rally point, maybe it's a harassment point, but basically something near your opponent. So four major ones. I put them on Control Q, Control W, Control E, Control R to create them, and Alt Q and so on to uh, to go to them up to you exactly how you do it but I definitely urge you guys to point it out now you can see he's in the uh, like one o'clock position on the map so basically as long as I have overlords and maybe even a set of lings to scout the third I can limit him to four gas on this map and you see like all this open area outside the natural so that's a great place for me to engage um but i do want to you know continue scouting with the overlords and make sure i know exactly what he's going for there i am taking my um second gas and looks like i might be thinking about a third here shortly anyways i do have a fairly quick third and like i mentioned earlier this base sometimes you might be expanding towards your opponent and not even know it i did do that here unfortunately but i've got the baleen nest and a layer on the way so i'm getting into that uh, Hydraling, Baneling style that you are really coveting uh, when you go into this matchup. That's what you're really aiming for. Now you can see, I see the uh, Twilight Council and the Robo. So I'm expecting Blink or Zealot Legs or something like that. I'm definitely expecting Immortals. I could also potentially be getting like a Dark Templar drop, hence the Spore Crawler. Uh, there's a lot of different things this combination could be going for, so I'm just trying to be super careful here. What he will actually go for is Adepts, and I've had a real-life Korean recently give me some advice when it comes to compositions in this particular matchup. Apparently, if you're seeing a lot of Adepts, the best thing to do is go for Banelings. If you're seeing a lot of Archons, to, you want a lot of Hydras with a lot of Lings that are supported, you can go a little less on the Banelings. And basically, depending on anything you're um, facing, you just adjust one or two of those units, and the interactions between those units will actually handle just about anything Protoss can throw at you. 
I do like getting the uh, plus attack upgrades, both of them, because if, nah, if you're using a Hydrolane Baneling Army, it's mostly that explosive damage you're looking for. The unit staying alive much longer doesn't actually help that much. And we're starting to see me shift a little bit more into army production at this point. Get some creep spread going. You know how important that is defensively. One thing I'm noticing weak in my play overall is that I don't get enough creep slaves. And therefore my, um, my creep isn't completely uh, spread out the way it should be. I definitely need to start using those more. Like I said, I, I, I'm afraid of the Dark Templar drop, so I'm going a little overboard with the static defense. All the more reason to go for Pneumatized Carapace. I can actually be poking in there with the Overlords right now if I were smart. And we see some units moving out on the minimap. I see it on the minimap. You can see my mouse like hovering over there, but I'm a little nervous like that you know it would have gotten past. I would have been late, so I just wanted to get these injects off. And looks like he's in my third base. No, no, those were just drones moving around. Sorry, paranoid. So yeah, confirmation on the immortal. And getting some of that creep spread, like I said, afraid of the drops. And here's the mass army of adepts we were looking for. So yeah, huge number of adepts. I have a mostly Hydra army. I'm going to need lots and lots of banelings. Going ahead and pulling the drones back. Really, I should have had a fourth base to go ahead and saturate. Maybe not have drones at it, but something I could uh, Maynard over to. Because I've noticed that a lot of times I found myself sacrificing a third base to get more time for an army. I don't know if that just means my injects aren't good, my larva spinning isn't good, or something along those lines. But I think that fourth base would definitely help out in my case. Now I'm just trying to buy time for the Banelings. Um, I know Hydros alone are not going to kill this army. Luckily, all this paranoia. There's the change. Luckily, all this paranoia with the spine crawlers is going to pay off in my advantage because it is going to force him back. Queens are there as well, but he's got nowhere to run to. He is going to lose all of these adepts and that puts me in a decent enough position i'm still like 15 army supply behind as you can see from the game heart ui but it's evening out here in the last few moments so now i've got a fourth now third base in production so i'll have this uh third three base economy going but i don't want them to go hunt for that base so let's go ahead and rebuild this one and just anticipate more attacks here now we've got more Hydralisks, I have the 2-2 on the way, but his army is definitely encroaching on my creep right now, and uh, I don't have that much to defend. It's 38 to 38, so we are in an okay position, it's just got to finish hatching, and I've got to get it into a decent enough position. Now he is moving in with the Mothership Core and some pretty decent units, but I've got a nice set of Hydralisks here, a lot of them bleeding out to the Adepts. But here in a moment, I'm going to target down that Mothership Core, going to cut off any retreat he might have. And then as the buffer units here start to bleed off in the form of these Adepts, I will be able to get at the Immortal and some of the more important units. And there's the 30 base economy, fully returned. And 11 Hydralisks are in production. He's only just now getting the 2-2 upgrades. So I am, like, when I say 2-2, I mean, like, forge like he, he can make two upgrades at a time with a forge so he's not even got the one one right now and i have already completed two two and you can't see the battle just this moment but here we go got the high ground advantage i've got a pretty good ranged advantage so he can't kite me too much uh, I was able to get that stalker more depths swinging in like I said I'd have liked to have had more banelings in these battles but I wasn't a hundred percent sure that banelings were the best thing against the depths at this particular moment so kind of figuring it out the hard way losing a lot of hydralisks 
but ultimately it's turning out okay for me. I don't know if I lose this third base again, but he's got a nice army there and there's no real reason for me to fight it. I know that my, uh, my drones aren't there and it's not in any way intended to be a mining base, so... That's the thing about being Zerg, you can make production from just about uh, any hatchery. It doesn't, like, it can be at an expansion, but it doesn't have to be an expansion, if you feel me. And he's doing a really good job with these warped prisms, but he is immediately underneath an overlord, so if I can get the right angle on there, I can probably bust up his formation. Another gas going down. You have to imagine behind all of this, he's expanding. Alright, so we've got a huge army of the Banelings now. The way I'm hotkeying this is all the Hydraling Baneling on one, Ling Baneling on two, and just Baneling on three. That way I can kill away individual groups. I actually could micro this a little bit better using that, but I only recently realized that. In any case, definitely keeping a little bit of high ground vision there for the Hydralis and eliminating most of that army. The Adepts are managing to get out of dodge pretty quickly, but most of them completely being ignored by the blue player. Not the best execution. Mainly is going to be able to roll in here and clean that up. Even though that was maybe an inefficient use of gas, could use the Hydralis for that. Didn't want to bleed them out. And this gives me the opportunity to go ahead and move out onto his side of the map and start punishing any mistakes he's made. There is another Mothership Core. We can get that killed off. No recall there. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm going to go ahead and peel off a couple of these drones. Yep, yeah, there we go. Another one going down with another expansion. And now we are on his side of the map. So he is, currently thinks he's a base up. He's got cannons there. He's feeling good. But Link Hydra is very, very powerful, especially when you got the 2-2 upgrades. He's going to be swinging an army in. Loses one of the Warp Prism. Does have some Adepts and a few zealots in here, zealots with legs. I'm gonna peel off a lot of the Hydralis, but Hydralis deal a lot of DPS in a limited amount of time they are alive. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull these back, try and group up with some of these reinforcements. And this is going to expose the Immortal from behind. Gonna kill that off. That's actually a huge damage deal there, and I can just kind of kite around the zealots here and i could have left one or two hydralisks there to continue doing that kind of uh running the one hydralisk around but gonna go ahead and pull over here try and get some damage done to this nexus i could continue using that tactic but instead i'm using hydralisks with heals we've got some tap dancing hydralisks they are stutter stepping they are having so much fun with these zealots zealots want to dance this zealots got pretty legs Alright, killing off the, uh, the Zealots, and you can see just how much damage, just, what is that, eight Hydralists are doing so quickly to that Nexus, and that is of course going to force these probes to pull off, I'm going to still lose the Nexus, I targeted that down first, now I could be focus firing these Zealots, I should be focus firing these Zealots, but killed off a huge number of the probes in, again, a very short amount of time, Hydralists do so much damage. And uh, just going to be peeling on through here. The Immortal is there, but... Ah, oh, man. Actually, watching this, I see how many opportunities I have to focus fire. I'm just not that good, guys, but it's okay. Won that one. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.